I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to present this lecture. I have no conflicts of interest. As a background, I am going to present a common clinical scenario in which the issue of weight gain can occur in clinical practice. This is a 32-year-old Hispanic man diagnosed with HIV uh, infection in 2017 after presenting with chlamydia trachomitis urethritis. He has no other clinical uh, history and he works at, in a pub and has a rotating schedule. He has a grandmother with diabetes. At baseline, he uh, started with a CD4 cell count of 375 cells and an HIV viral load of over 100,000 copies per milliliter. He started ART in 2017 with TAF, FTC, and Elvitegra, Virkovicistat, with an initial BMI of 22. After two years, he's virally suppressed with stable ART, and we noticed that although he's still in the normal weight range, uh, he has increased his body weight by 10% since the, he, he started the ART. And the patient is not particularly worried about this issue, and he relates it to poor diet and lack of exercise because of his work. So weight and body fat distribution have always been a clinical challenge for people with HIV. In the pre-ART era, people with HIV experienced severe wasting. With the advent of early antiretroviral therapy, some antiretrovirals were associated with the occurrence of lipodystrophy. With most modern and less toxic antiretrovirals, weight gain after uh, ART initiation has become common. This phenomenon is generally related with a return to health effect in which uh, the mitigation of HIV associated inflammation and accelerated catabolism could uh, induce to increase weight. However, recent data suggests that people with HIV might be experiencing an excessive weight gain, particularly with some, some antiretrovirals, and there are concerns about its metabolic impact. So this trend in body weight has been demonstrated in the case of Permanente cohort in the US, in which the researchers compared changes in BMI over 8,000 people with HIV initiating antiretrovirals and matched uninfected persons identified from the same healthcare system. In this analysis, people with HIV uh, in green had lower BMI at baseline, but increased at a rate three times higher than those of uninfected individuals particularly comparing uh, people with HIV and uninfected people with the similar BMI at baseline, people with HIV had faster increases and ended up with a higher BMI after 12 years, even those uh, who were obese at baseline. This suggests that there is a persistent weight gain even after the return to health effect. So what do we know about weight gain in ART naive individuals? So in the advanced study done in South Africa, where 99% of participants were black and 60% were women, ART naive participants were randomly, uh, randomly assigned to dolutegravir or efavirenz together with TDF-FTC or a third regimen of dolutegravir combined with TAF-FTC. This trial has demonstrated the most striking changes in body weight after ART initiation and significant differences in weight gain between the sexes. Women who started with dolutegravir and TAF gained a mean of eight kilograms after two years, compared with the three kilograms in Greece in those who started with the Fabrians and TDF. In women who started with dolutegravir TDF, there was still a significant weight gain of eight kilograms on average supporting a possible additive effect of TAF to that of dolutegravir. Treatment emerging obesity was also higher among women than men, reaching 27% in the group of TAF, FTC, and dolutegravir. Lastly, we see that increases in fat mass were distributed between a trunk and limbs in all groups, indicating no evidence of lipodystrophy. The results of this study questions their return to health effect as the only driver of weight gain in these individuals, as it would not explain the differences between the different antiretrovirals. So maybe other factors can be involved. In a pooled analysis of eight 
treatment naive randomized control trials, the authors found weight gain in the three classes of uh, core agents. Interrace inhibitors containing regimens were associated with more weight gain than NNRTIs and PI-based regimens. Within the integrase inhibitors class, the lutegravir and rilpivir, um, sorry, the lutegravir and bitegravir were associated with four kilograms increase, uh, more than with elbitegravir cobicistat. Among the NR NNRTIs, rilpivirin was associated with more weight gain compared to efibrance. Among NRTI pairs, TAF and FTC was associated with the most weight gain. In this analysis, 17% of participants had at least 10% uh, of body weight increase from baseline. Uh, in this table, we can see that lower CD4 cell counts, higher HIV viral load, uh, lower BMI, female sex, and black ethnicity were associated with significant weight gain. And regarding the core agent, the use of pitegravir, dolutegravir, elvitegravir, covicistat, and rilpivirin were associated with an increased risk of significant weight gain compared with efavirenzine. Among NRTIs, TAF, but not avacavir or TDF, was associated with a significant weight gain. So in the previous trials, uh, newer third agents were generally co-administered with newer NRTIs, making it challenging to completely disconnect the associations of individual agents in weight gain. For that reason, analyzing weight changes in individuals receiving tenofovir sparing dual regimens could bring more data on its effects. In the Gemini studies, uh, individuals were randomized to start dual therapy with dolutegravir 3TC or TDF FTC dolutegravir. Individuals receiving dual therapy gained a mean of 1.3 kilograms more than those randomized to triple therapy. All this data, together with the results of other studies, such as those of pre-exposure prophylaxis, suggest that TDF might have a weight suppressive effect. So evaluating the effects of antiretrovirals on weight gain in ART naive individuals is usually confounded by uh, the return to health effect. So let's see what happens in antiretrovirals experienced individuals. In this pooled analysis from two ACDG trials, the authors analyzed whether the use of interrace inhibitors-based ART was associated with weight gain in virologically suppressed people with HIV and described within persons' uh, weight trajectories over time in those switching uh, to interrace inhibitors from PIs or NNRTIs. As we can see on the left, uh, overall weight gain for the cohort increased uh, or there was a weight gain after follow, following an ISD initiation. Particularly women, uh, individuals of black ethnicity are those aged more than 60 years had a significant weight gain after ISD initiation. Differences were observed among intergrass inhibitors. On the right, we see that dolutegravir was associated with the greatest increase in, increase in weight uh, which occurred in persons switched both from PIs and from NNRDIs. The effect of switching from uh, TDF to TAF was analyzed in the OPERA cohort among nearly 7,000 virologically suppressed people with HIV in the US, stratified by core agent. In this figure, we can see all individuals who maintain other antiretrovirals and only switch from TDF to TAF. Here we see that uh, Weight, weight gain was fairly constant, but slow uh, on individuals on TAF. Immediately after switching to TAF, sorry, before it wasn't with, with TDF, in the, when those individuals switch to TAF, we can see a rapid increase in weight at the rate of 2.43 kilograms per year. After about nine months, mean weights continue to increase at a lower rate of 0 0.24 kilograms per year, more comparable to that observed during treatment with TDF. When stratified by core HN class, people who maintained an INST, an NRTI, or PI experienced similar changes in weight over time. Here we observe weight trajectories over time among, among those who maintained uh, in, on the top or switched on the bottom to an integrase inhibitor. 
Again, individuals experience an increased rate of weight gain immediately after switching to TAF, followed either by lower rates of weight gain or a plateau. Similarly, a study performed in the Swiss HIV cohort among over 4,000 people with HIV compared weight trajectories over time between individuals who continued TDF until the end of the study and those who had TDF replaced by TAF. After 18 months of switching to TAF, there was a significantly higher overall increase in body weight compared to individuals who continued on TAF on TDF. And this increase was observed regardless of the third drug use, the sex, or origin, as we can see in this table. However, the absolute increase in weight on TAF was largest among individuals, women uh, of African origin. All these results taken together suggest an independent effect of TAF or the lack of TDF on weight also among ART experienced individuals. So considering the evidence on, of weight gain, both the European and the DHHS uh, guidelines have recognized this issue and stated some recommendations. In general, they focus on lifestyle interventions to initiate regular exercise and make healthy dietary modifications. And there are no current recommendations to avoid integrase inhibitors or TAF for possible weight gain. But what is, what is driving weight gain in people with HIV? As far as we know, it is probable that the, the mechanism of an excessive weight gain among people with HIV on modern ART is multifactorial and driven by the interplay between demographic factors, comorbidities, HIV-related factors, the composition of antiretroviral regimens, and our current obesogenic environment. The return to health effect is an important factor in ART naive in individuals but it would not explain the substantial differences in weight gain between the antiretrovirals, suggesting that other elements are involved. In this regard, factors such as whether ART tolerability, uh, gut microbi microbiome modifications, genetic differences in drug metabolism, and the interference with hormones involved in the regulation of caloric intake have been involved. On the other side, which is the metabolic impact of ART-related weight gain. While some studies performed in the early ART era show that weight gain after ART initiation increases the risk of diabetes and cardiovascular disease, little is known about the metabolic impact of weight gain in the modern ART era. Some studies reported higher rates of diabetes, metabolic syndrome, or cardiovascular risk with the use of interface inhibitors or TAF, while other studies have not seen this association and further research is needed. So some take home messages. Uh, weight gain is becoming a relevant factor uh, to consider when individualizing ART. It appears to be greatest with second generation integrase inhibitors and with TAF versus TDF. Some risk factors have been identified such as low BMI and CD4 cell counts, a higher HIV viral load, female sex, and uh, black ethnicity. The consequences of ART-associated weight gain have been explored incompletely, and the independent factor of uh, ARVs versus weight is difficult to establish. Additionally, some cultural and demographic factors may play a role. Currently, there is no data to support ART switch in this scenario. Besides some case report, there is no guarantee that changing the ART regimen would reverse or prevent further weight gain. Today, the use of the best ART regimen that controls HIV infection for a particular individual and the promotion of healthy lifestyles modifications appears to be a cornerstone. Thank you.